Right Hugh, so this is the memorial to the seven sufferers as they're called. Right. right. Um, not many folk know about this stone's existence. Not Probably not a lot of folk know about why the stone's here, the tragic events which has uh, resulted in this wee memorial being set up. But it, it, uh, it goes away back to 1887 and Ardnahoe Arnaho Farm, which is a and couple so, of miles up that way. Well, Ar yeah. Arnaho so we Farm. So we, right. we can see Ardnaho yeah. Farm just over the wall here, yeah. Okay. And it was like the seven sufferers were seven Irish tatty hookers. And, and they, they came from Donegal, is that they right? They Donegal. They were seasonal workers. They were hired every summer by a Mr Chalmers who was a potato merchant in Greenock and they came over from Donegal and they would work the summer season back back breaking work lifting the potato crop and then they'd return in the autumn with their with their money with their savings back to their families in Ireland in the west of Ireland however on this set uh, on this night and it was in um, 8th of July uh, 1887 they were uh, exhausted after a day's toiling in the in the, in the fields, lifting the potatoes, and they were locked in a, a, an outbuilding. And uh, what had happened? Uh, a fire broke out, and they were they were trapped in there. And seven of them died, and I think one at least, maybe two, were females, but seven of them were burnt to death. Oh, that's uh, terrible. A couple of them survived. A couple of the guys actually survived. Incredibly. They were working back at work the next day. You can't imagine that. Now. Really, I've really. I've an account of it. An account of it. Of um, uh, an, an interview at the time with one of them. The following day, he was out working again. I mean, I know it's like it just doesn't sound possible, but it was a lot of it was to do with um, the way that these uh, itinerant workers, Irish workers, were treated. They were they weren't they treated great um, uh, in, in general, you know. Um, but this, what happened was that they were buried in this wee mass grave here, and this memorial was uh, paid for by public subscription in Rossi. People got together and, or there would have been nothing so, at so, all. So obviously, was it reported at the time? Was it in I the mean, newspapers? It yeah, it was. It was in the newspapers. I've seen the, I've seen the, I've seen the reports in the Butman. We'll have a look at that later, Hugh, uh, because it is a mystery. But um, just imagine nowadays if seven people were killed in one incident like this, were burned to death in a fire, that would be Im instantly, that news would be instantly um, transmitted all over the world. Yes. And there would be a huge investigation into the cause of it, what, what, the loss of life like that. Because yeah. there's a lot, you know, seven people's a lot, and especially in a rural community like this. And, it, and you know, of course never heard there must have like been that, questions you know, to answer about people well, being you, locked you, into you, a you, exactly, barn. Exactly, exactly. If that was the case, yes. However, um, there's no suspicion at all attached to to MD. Uh, you know, there's any malicious intent there. Yes, yeah, sure. But, but yeah. the, the fact the fact remains, a fire broke out and they were unable to get out, and they were they were they were killed, and there was no investigation whatsoever. A very maybe a cursory investigation by the police or the authorities, but nothing that you would recognise. Has there been any contact with people from Donegal coming yes, over here I or I anything? I have no idea. I yeah. don't know. I have no idea. However, um, the the um, the incident was forgotten fairly quickly, which seems quite amazing. But it, 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 it was. And this is this is in a week and a week and a corner, we quiet corner of the cemetery here at King Garth. Right. And you know, you wouldn't know really that this had happened you know, the, the story behind it. It's, it's, yes. It's, in, it's incredible really when you think about it, you know, that something of that magnitude should happen here in Butte and uh, be more or less not glossed over but not given the not given the the, the, the attention and the, the the legal the legal interest that that, that, that it should, and uh, it should and are, they, are they buried here? As far as I know they are, yeah, yes. as far as I know they are. Yeah. Now, it's, I think they are actually buried here. Um, there's no names, as you can see. Yes, oh, there's no, no names. names. And, um, and a strange thing uh, is these pennies that's here. A, that's, a, that's a relative new thing. Yeah, that's and, the, and they're, they're around the, all the... Right around the whole, the the whole bit. bit. Yes. But that, that's a new thing. I mean, I, I, we're here, um, just up the road there is Donegal. These people here were from, from Donegal. Donegal. Donegal down there and Donegal over there mean exactly the same thing. 
and, 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 and uh, fort, what does it mean? It means the fort of the foreigner. Right. That's what it means. Oh, Gaelic yeah, sure. or Gaelic, Irish or Scots. Yeah. Donegal, Donegal, exactly the same meaning, just a slight difference from the and the and the, the the Irish and the Scots Gaelic or Gaelic, but it means the fort of the foreigner. So right, it's quite sure. cool, you know. But isn't it sad that there's no mention of these people at all? Whether their families got to keep collect them or. What's what's a bit of investigation here? Oh, oh, oh absolutely. At the whole farm. The seven sufferers. Sad story, isn't it? Yes, absolutely a sad story. Named after him. See that? Oh, is it oh, Dumblane mm -hmm. is named after St. Yeah, Blaine? Right. Dumblane's named after him. Oh, right. And also Strathblane in Perthshire too. Uncle who ran the monastery was his mum's brother or something. Yeah. And then they sent him to Ireland. That's just something like that, yeah. Yeah, they sent See him that? to Ireland it's for education. Kilcatton Bay is after St. Catton. Oh, is that right? just means the church. And, church and, and so, so, so Cat Catton. That was his uncle or something? Yes. His mum was called Bertha or Ertha. All oh, right. She was Irish. And then it was it's significant that he was sent to Ireland for education. Yeah. And then he came back. Well, that's what we kind of did. Ireland was the kind of place that produced all these kind of... I suppose it's things. kind of a bit like St. Patrick and so on, isn't it? You know, born in Scotland. Yeah, kind of is. Yeah. Right, well, he was a slave though, wasn't he, Patrick? When he went to Ireland. He was taken oh. against his will. Right. And they say, they're not sure whether he was born in Scotland, though. I think he probably was. I think that's where old Kilpatrick, I think that's where they think. But the people in Here. Right. For a long time people thought it was for grinding corn. You know what I mean? But it turns out it's not. They think it was for bathing pilgrims' feet in. Really? That came up to the site. It was a site of pilgrimage. And they would bathe the pilgrims' feet in this. Don't put it clogged up now. That's quite amazing really, isn't it? When I was a boy though, there was quite a well here, so completely clogged up now. Tenth century, traditionally but mistakenly known as the Tomb of St Blaine, but in fact a grave marker of a, a Viking settler. settler. You know that's that small island uh, near Butte? In Spanish. Yeah, apparently there's Vikings buried there or something. Well there was, there was after a battle of Largs, uh, when King Hacking's force get defeated by a legend says that there was two Vikings left behind okay. and they managed to make it to Inchmarnock their life's out in a cave in, in Inchmarnock Vikings came to Butte because that's why there's so many fair-haired people in Butte it's yeah. all Viking descent it's Well, all well is, is there Viking names on Butte? Aye, uh, Strad Right What's, Strad, do you know the Strad? Yes That's Viking for street Oh, right That just means street Right, there was sure a lot of There was a Viking longhouse at uh, Kilcatton Bay, there was a Viking longhouse there, but there's lots of... But of course this place was ransacked by the Vikings. Ah, it was ransacked by the Vikings, yeah. Yeah, and so was St Blaine's. So that's been, a, there's a Viking dude under that. It's not St Blaine, it's some oh, so, so, Yeah, so there's a Viking yeah. guy under here then. Not much left of him now. Right. Bye. But I've, I've heard about how the Vikings used to communicate with each other. How was that here? They used to use Norse codes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
I'm over in the lovely city of Dublin in Ireland. You may wonder why I'm here, but in one of my previous episodes, I covered the story of Frederick Dearchison, who led the Sherwood Foresters in 1916, when they marched into Dublin to suppress the rebellion at that time. And from the building behind me here, actually an Irish nationalist short Frederick Dearchison as he came along here. As far as I can work out, he was coming from Balls Bridge, which was in that direction. And when the battalion reached here, he was unfortunately shot dead. He had just by chance met his wife and two children who had passed on to him a couple of letters and a present. When this whole business is over, I'll spend some time with you and the children. Do be careful, Freddy. I love you. I love you too. Very unfortunately for him, from the building behind me, um, there was two shooters in there. And they opened fire on the Sherwood Foresters just as they reached this point. And one of the first to die was the leader, Frederick Dietrichson, who had the connections with Butte. Mick Malone himself would later die here. There's a memorial to credit him. So the Sherwood Foresters would have been coming along the road behind me in this direction when they would have met um, enemy fire. Just where I'm standing could have been the spot that Frederick Dearson died because this is just across the road from the house at 25 Northumberland Road where the bullets came from. Nothing we can do for him. Nothing we can do. He's gone. You wouldn't expect that there's a connection between Phil Linnett and Butte, but there's two connections that I can think of. First of all, Phil Linnett's father-in-law, Leslie Crowther, went to school in the Second World War in Port Barentine. So during the Second World War, Leslie Crowther was based high on the hill behind me at Hilton Farm and just across the road here in Port Bannantyne he went to the local school. But another connection is that Phil Linnett's bass player Jimmy Bain who played in Rainbow and so on, he wasn't the bass player in Thin Lizzy, he was the bass player on Phil's solo albums. Um, he married 
the last Marcus's sister, and Phil used to, well, he came once anyway, he came to Mount Stewart, and um, who knows what they got up to there. But um, Jimmy Bean married the Marcus's, the last Marcus's sister, and they had a daughter called Samantha. And if you Spotify, you can find Phil and Jimmy Bain singing a song, Samantha, and that was dedicated to Jimmy Bain's daughter. <laughs> <laughs>